Oshkosh. Uh, somebody told me I had uh, bad fuel caps, and I did. They had uh, two vents in them. The typical tube, these, these are the new ones here. This is not the ones I had the problems with. But the old ones also had a tube like this, but they also had a vent up inside that would allow the gasoline to come out underneath. So I got these new gas caps from Univer. They are a whole lot better than the old ones. They res did resolve that problem. However, others have told me that the problem is it leaks around this seal when the tanks are real full. So I uh, did remove these last year and I put new gaskets, but the problem is, is these screws are not sealed. So gasoline will come up and then uh, out, uh, leak out underneath the uh, screw heads. Uh, now, if you don't fill your tanks all the way up, typically that's not a problem. The problem, of course, where I had is if I would fill them up after a flight and then I'd leave it in the hangar and then it would get warm and expand and then it would leak out. So obviously I shouldn't do that. I haven't been doing that, but um, I, just a couple times that I, I did or it had happened in flight, you can see the ugly staining on top of the wing. I, I can actually take that off, but it's, it's a pain. So anyway, um, there is a fix for this. Part of the problem is, is um, these screws, uh, this, this metal that the uh, fuel tank is made out of is so flimsy that uh, even if these two screws get, do get a good seal, it's gonna leak uh, between the screws. And all there are is Tinnerman nuts uh, on the back side of these screws, which uh, I find they're crazy. Um, so there is a fix, and uh, Billy Carter uh, actually came up with the fix. And uh, he has a really good fix, and I, I have some pictures of uh, something similar that I made. Uh, sorry, Billy, but I, <laughs> I took your idea and I made my own. Uh, regardless, it, I think it's going to fix the problem. So uh, let me show you what uh, I made uh, per Billy Carter's um, idea. And hats off to Billy Carter for coming up with this idea. So uh, his actually looks better than mine. You can see mine is uh, handmade. Um, but what this does is this is a backing plate that will go underneath in the fuel tank and it will allow this to be as a backing plate so we put the, and that's what this slot is for is to wiggle it down in the fuel tank after we get the the uh, neck off and so you get that down in there then you put a seal on top of it then we put another seal on top of that and squeeze these together and this being of um, uh, aluminum will be much better than a uh, Tinnerman nut. Also, these are extremely expensive sealed um, nuts. I'm not, I don't recall the, the technical name for them, but uh, I had a hard time finding them actually and uh, there's actually a little gasket under there that seals them off and that would prevent the fuel from leaking up through the screw. So that's the idea. So tonight I'm going to uh, put, uh, put them on. I may only get one on tonight because my lovely wife has dinner um, going. So um, we'll get one on and see how it goes. And again, Billy Carter, man, thank you for coming up with this great idea. I think you got a winner here. And uh, Billy Carter's the guy to get them from. Um, this took a lot of time, and I was fortunate to have some unique tools that I could make this. But uh, uh, Billy Carter is the place to get these uh, going forward. All right, here we go. Fuel neck off. Uh, incidentally, make sure that you have... Uh, a marker that you mark what the forward direction of the fuel, the filler is. Otherwise you'll index it to the wrong place and your caps then won't be indexed forward. 
Make sure that you have a, a magnet, a strong magnet, because you probably will drop some of the Tinderman nuts down in the fuel tank, and it's not a problem because uh, they're well attracted to the magnet. So anyway, here's what I'm saying here. See how this metal on the fuel tank is flimsy? It's, it's, it's just not, it's okay, but, uh, and maybe mine's got more problems than, uh, than others, but that's the idea of taking this and getting it underneath here uh, with a seal on the top of this and the seal on top of that. And so in between uh, these, um, in addition, these uh, nut, uh, capsulated nuts are sealed and uh, will prevent fuel from leaking up through the threads. And I think that's where a lot of my problem uh, was. So uh, we'll keep, uh, keep on it here. There's a lot of these gaskets on, on the market. Uh, if you're gonna do this job, don't get cheap gaskets. Uh, the best gaskets to get is a gasket made by the real gasket company, okay? And for our Stinson 108, this is the number right there, RG108, or RG-108. And um, these are uh, very good. So again, we're gonna put one underneath, one underneath between this and the bottom, uh, underside of the fuel tank. And we're going to put one of these on, on top. And then we're gonna put the fuel cap on top. Now, i am also got uh, different screws. So I'm using machine screws, obviously, rather than Tinnerman uh, screws. So uh, that will, um, we'll be able to get more torque uh, with them as well. And uh, incidentally, I do have a little uh, torque driver that we'll use to get a equal torque. Uh, so because I'm out in the hangar working by myself and no one's here to hold the camera for me, uh, I wish I had somebody here to hold the camera so I, you could watch me try to get this in this hole underneath here. Okay, so this is kind of like a puzzle. I got to get this inside the fuel tank using this slit here. And I think it can be done. Then once I get this under there, then I've got to get the this gasket on top of it. So, hmm. I've been thinking this through. I've laid awake at night thinking how I'm going to do this. But uh, here it goes. I will let you know how it goes. I got it in. It actually wasn't as tough as I thought. So I got the backing plate in here and I had a, a longer bolt uh, that I just have temporary in there just to hold it. So this may be easier than getting the gasket on here, but we'll see. So it wasn't, wasn't all that difficult. So uh, uh, of course it had, it had to have that slit in it. So. Uh, here, let's put the uh, the gasket in, in there and on top of that. See how that report? I have the gasket in there and it's on top of the fuel cap. So, so far so good. Um, I did get a little longer screws and uh, I'll show those to you when I get them on here. So my, my, my thinking is here now, so this is, that mark is the front of the cap. I'm going to put it on here and then come over to the other side and put a screw in and then come back over, take this bolt out and replace it with a screw while holding up the inside. That's, that's the theory. We'll see how it goes. Problem. You remember how this was all bent and dented out here and it was flared out? Well, it was, ex it was expanded so much I couldn't get my screw through here. So I'm using a C-clamp going around here and flattening this out. I'm not done, I got a lot more work to do, but uh, it, it, it's helping quite a bit. Okay, it's the next day, and I found out that the screws that I was trying to use were not long enough. So I had to go to Wichita and get longer screws. So I've got several packs of screws here. 
And uh, out of one of these, I think we're gonna find a screw that works. But uh, one of the things I wanted to show you here is the difference in the quality of the gaskets. Remember I mentioned use real gaskets. So this is the, eight, let me get the light, it's kind of dark out here. This is the real gasket. This is good stuff, thick. This is the original gasket. And look how much thinner it is. Okay, I'll put these two ne next to each other. Uh, if you can see that. So, if you do this, get the real gaskets, okay? And get four of them. You're going to need four of them. Two for each side. So, anyway, we got longer screws, and... We'll start putting it together. And I also picked up some little O-rings. I don't know if they're necessary, but uh, I do not want this thing to leak. So I'll show you what I'm doing here in just a okay, second. You're gonna need screws that are um, uh, about three quarters of an inch long. Okay, so here's the screw that I believe is gonna work best. AN526C1032R12. Okay, they're three quarter inch long screws. So if you kind of look at where this is going to match up here, and sorry for the light, but uh, it's the way it is out in the dark hangar. Um, so put a little space on there, account for the uh, thickness of the fuel tank. That's about where that screw is going to set depth in that, um, uh, that threaded, uh, encapsulated nut assert there, whatever it's called. So anyway, I uh, think this is gonna work. Three quarters of an inch long. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do is, I know this is overkill, but I'm gonna put a little tiny O-ring underneath that screw just to seal uh, it off as well. So I think it's an overkill and I may have problems with it, but uh, we're gonna try it. So I put these little tiny O-rings under here, probably an overkill. But I got these from the National um, Aircraft Parts Association store. And uh, the uh, when I tighten the screws down, they pretty well flatten out. And uh, they're still there. So I think they'll do a little bit of good. Um, maybe somebody can tell me if I'm doing a... Uh, this is not a good idea. But I have no sealant or anything on there because I didn't want anything to get in the tank. So... So far, so good. I've got three screws there. Tighten them down pretty tight. And man, I really like what the uh, plate is uh, sucking this up flat here. So I will go ahead and put the rest of the screws in. And uh, then I will snug them up with a uh, torque driver. Make sure they're all equal. And uh, report back. the uh, torqueometer that I use to bring these screws all up to an even torque. Uh, I checked the... Uh, internet and it says like uh, 30 inch pounds on stainless steel screws like this but you know I I took them to um, 15 and um, looking at the gasket it's just just starting to squash out a little bit and I, and I, th I think 15 is going to be fine here so this torqueometer I bought it on uh, the internet uh, and uh, ironically it's for uh, bicycles I think I paid a whole twenty dollars for it or something like that. It's and I checked it against a uh, a, a more a better known brand and it, it works pretty well. So I went around back and forth, keep increasing the torque into uh, uh, fifteen, I believe is what I got it on now. So uh, seems to be pretty good. And I tell you, Billy Carter, you are a wizard. This is rock solid. This is so much better. I mean. Before I could move it around and I and I could tell that it wasn't taking a really good seal uh, I think we got a winner here Billy. Thank you so much for coming up with this idea here. This is awesome All right, I'm uh, I, I get excited about goofy things like uh, uh, a fuel inlet neck that doesn't leak uh, I get excited about uh, fuel caps that uh, don't leak so uh, I uh, am looking forward to filling up the tank next time I'm on a trip and uh, hopefully having it not leak. And now I gotta clean off all that uh, crud there. And so onward to do the uh, left side uh, 
wing. Here well, we I go. I came back, I left it set for, I don't know, 15 minutes or something. I came back and retorqued it, and it seems like the gaskets are uh, taking a set, and so I was able to retorque them uh, um, to 15 inch pounds. Inch pounds, make sure it's inch pounds, not foot pounds. So the other thing is, uh, I remember using real gaskets on the uh, valve covers, and it did indicate uh, on the valve covers that to uh, torque them down, and then uh, I don't recall what the procedure was, but come back and check it again, and uh, uh, they do uh, take uh, kind of a set, or the, uh, the gaskets tend to compress just a bit, so, uh, but man, uh, that's, uh, that's a really good seal around there. So, boys and girls, I'm excited. I'll show you, I'm about to start in on the, uh, the left or the pilot side here, and you can see how bad this is dented, bent from uh, people dropping the uh, fuel nozzle in there and bending that up. So, I'm going to use my C clamp that I used on the other side, a little tiny C clamp to go in there and flatten that out. So, we'll see how she does. Uh, Something I want to mention, when you do this job um, and put these kits in, you are bound to knock some crud from the back side here. Uh, you know, just look at these Tinnerman washers here, how rusty and corroded they are. Uh, you are bound to knock some crud down in the tank. So I would, uh, caution, I would urge you to use caution for the next few hours of flight. Make absolutely sure that you are um, sumping the tanks and um, of course sumping the um, draining off the uh, the main sump um, at the gasolator and you may also want to ch check uh, the gasolator uh, for crud as well. So um, I know there's uh, screens inside the tanks here that take care of most of that, but some of this crud we're knocking loose is a pretty small stuff. So just use caution. You're bound to knock some crud off and uh, use caution on your next uh, few hours of flight. Things I forgot to mention is the holes in the, um, the neck uh, will need to be enlarged a bit. I used a taper reamer and just by hand uh, it worked out just fine. So uh, uh, add that to your uh, tool list as well as a, uh, a small inch pound torqueometer. Okay, got the pilot side done, so they're both done. And uh, Billy Carter, again, thank you for coming up with this novel concept. Uh, this is uh, this is so much more solid than it was before. I believe this is going to secure. Uh, prevent the uh, uh, fuel leaking from the the neck um, this backing plate and the encapsulated uh, nuts back there sealed nuts and on top of that is going to do a great job and uh, just don't forget uh, if you have not uh, uh, if you have problems with fuel leaking uh, the first thing to do is check your fuel caps uh, let me go get my old fuel cap and I'll show you this, this is the fuel cap that was on uh, the Stinson when I bought it and last year or I don't remember last year or the year before I was at Oshkosh and uh, sitting at the uh, in the red barn there and I think it was Billy Carter I was talking to I was telling man I said I fill them up my tanks and they uh, the tanks leak out he said the first thing to do is check your fuel cap he says go check your fuel cap and see if you got a vent on it I said well yeah I got a vent it's got a tube no 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 he says it's got two vents he said, they're all supposed to have this tube. He said, take your cap off and look in the inside there. Let me turn this around to the light here. He said, if you see a hole inside your cap, uh, besides the vent hole, uh, you got a bad cap. He said, Univer put these out for a long time with that hole in there. So when the fuel get, expands, it gets in that uh, hole and it'll leak out on top of your wing. And so uh, that's the first thing you wanna check. Do you have defective caps? Now, frankly, these caps probably could be fixed. Uh, that hole could be, put a little screw in it or something, but uh, 
anyway, I, I like this cap so much better. Uh, looked better, and it was just a cleaner design. So, um, anyway, that's uh, got these from Univer. They're kind of expensive. Uh, so, but anyway, between the cap and the Billy Carter reinforcement back there, and uh, a total of four, two on each side, the real gaskets, and the three quarter inch uh, 1032 stainless steel, torque these up all even. Uh, I am pretty sure that this is going to resolve the problem. So I know I did a video uh, on the caps uh, uh, some months ago or a year or so ago, and uh, I just used the regular gaskets. That's before I realized that I could get real gaskets. Um, that video is old and outdated. In fact, I'm gonna take it down. So this is everything that you need to do. Uh, uh, all, all these things here. So this is part of the benefit of supporting the International Stinson Group. Uh, it motivates uh, owners like myself to uh, provide uh, educational information to help other people. If you're not a member of the International Stinson Group, uh, please uh, check them out. I think the dues are 35 or it's cheap, whatever it is, $50 a year. And that helps support uh, you know, um, uh, educational material and, and stuff like that. So we all need to pitch in together and, and keep these old uh, airplanes flying. All right, this is Brett from Neodeshay, Kansas, signing off.